And in this episode, I'm going to give you the weekly data for the housing market, okay? And before I give you that data, please make sure that you smash that like button, make sure you like it and share it. Also, for more tips on how to create financial freedom through real estate investing, follow me on Instagram, Martin Perdomo, the elite strategist, or all of my social media channels. Okay, guys, so here it is. Housing market update, homes linger on the market as buyers take their time. And of course, we are experiencing that. We talked about that in the last week's episode, weekly update. By the way, if you're watching watching this. It's the beginning of the year. Happy New Year's to you. May this new year bring you health, wealth, and prosperity. Okay, let's get right into it. The supply of homes for sales posted a record year-over-year increase this week as homes linger on the market, but some buyers are making their way back. That's good. I like to see that. Some home buyers are dipping their toes back in the market. Man, that excites me. We need to see buyer demand come back. That's what fuels real estate. That really helps fuel the economy when buyers come back. People do remodeling, contractors get more work like it fuels money into the economy home prices fell from a year earlier in 17 of the 50 most populous u.s metro so this is important data prices fell nine percent year over year in san francisco 6.25 in san jose six percent in la 4.5 in detroit 4.4 in pittsburgh 3.7 in sacramento 3.6 in oakland california 2.3 in austin they fell two percent or less in new york seattle anaheim california phoenix chicago new Newark, New Jersey, uh, Riverside, California, Boston, and Washington, D.C. And now, guys, let's focus on the leading indicators for home buying activity for the week. Mortgage purchase applications during the, the week ending December 16th, the most recent period of which data is available were essentially flat from a week earlier and up 4.6% from a month earlier, seasonally adjusted. Purchase applications were down 36% from a year earlier. Whoa, that's that's brutal man that's crash territory man 36 percent down that's bad google searches for homes for sale this is a great indicator of what is really happening in with buyers we're on par with the previous month during the week ending december 24th but down 38 percent from a year ago holy crap that's 40 percent almost 40 percent less search for homes for sale less buyers 40 percent less buyers it feels a lot more than that when um you have an actual property on the market i know i have a couple touring activity as of december 25th was down 69 percent from the start of the year holy smokes down 69 percent from the start of the year compared to 58 percent decrease at the same time last year according to our tech tour technology company showing time the significant declines are likely due to the holidays but man that is extremely significant (laughs) that's not just significant that's extremely significant the medium home sales price was 351 860 up just 0.7 percent year over year the slowest growth rate since the start of the pandemic yeah Duh. The medium asking price for newly listed homes was $349,950, up 3% year over year, the slowest growth since the start of the pandemic. Yeah, we're slowing down. Uh, This is what interest rates do, folks. When interest rates go up, this is the impact that they have. Like We're literally seeing the impacts of what interest rates really do to us when into real estate when they go up or when they go down, right? Like here it is. The monthly mortgage payment on medium asking home price, this is good data, was 22.65 at at current 6.42% mortgage rate. That's up slightly from a week earlier, but down 254 from the October peak. Monthly mortgage payments are up 36.7% from a year ago. Whoa, guys, think about that. Did people's incomes go up by 36.7% from a year ago? Did the average working, middle-class working family's income go up by 36.7% over a year? Probably not, (laughs) not probably, most likely, most certainly not, right? The average person gets a three to 5% raise. Pending home sales were down 31.8% year over year, one of the largest declines since at least January 15, as far back as the data goes. 
that is like, I mean, we're talking about levels to 2015. That's when we were just coming out of the last housing recession, right? The, the great recession of 2008. The new listings of homes for sale were down 21.6 a year earlier. One of the largest declines since the start of the pandemic. That means people aren't putting their homes for sale. That means that homeowners are getting hip to the fact like, hey, if I put my house in the market, where am I going to go? Number one. And number two, my payment is going to be higher someplace else with interest rates the way they are. So there's not a lot of inventory coming on the market but stay tuned coming to a theater near you i believe that there will be some more inventory coming to the market especially in this year of 2023 if we start seeing some the unemployment numbers go up and some layoffs start to happen in other sectors other than technology the technology sector has taken a beating when it comes to unemployment but we'll see what happens this year 28 percent of homes that went under contract had an accepted offer within the first two weeks on the market down from 35 percent a year earlier and the lowest share since january of 2020 23 percent of homes sold above their final list price down 41 percent a year earlier and the lowest level since march of 2020 that who's paying over asking right now it's got to be a really special house in a really special area that people really really want that's who's getting anything over asking in this marketplace. This is the one positive data I see here, and that's that inventory is low, and that just goes to the basics of supply and demand. People always need a place to live, regardless of the economic condition. So if inventory is low, buyers are gonna have to come back out eventually. I mean, they're gonna have to come back out eventually because people are gonna need a place to live. People have job changes, people, have to, you know, people uh, lose their jobs. People have to move for whatever reason. They have to put their, their properties on the market and or they they their family's growing. Now I'm expecting another kid and we need another house. So people's lives change through change. I believe buyers will eventually come back out. In conclusion, what are we learning here from this data? The market is extremely slow. Again, it's a little bit skewed data because this is from last week's data and the future's bright, man. If you know how to look for opportunities and you know how to buy, this is a buyer's market. The market just switched to in your favor while some think the market is going to continue to tank. I think the market will drop. I don't think the market is going to crash. My personal opinion, I think that the market is going to correct some more, maybe another seven or 8% this year. So I think we're going to see a decrease, an additional decrease in pricing this year in 2023 of seven, maybe 8%. I think if you're a buyer, I think it's a really good time to go out there and start making some offers. I'm not saying make asking price offers, maybe some disrespectful offers, but make offers because it's your time now. This is the time where all offers will be entertained. I can tell you 69%, just based on the data and my own experience, showings are down 69% week over week, 58% year over year showing. So there's no one even seeing houses. So that just tells you something. If I'm a seller or if someone's a seller on the other side, what do you think their psychology is? What do you think they're thinking? Holy crap, no one's coming to see my house. Holy crap, I got no buyers. There's no buyers out here. So they'd be willing to entertain all offers. All I'm saying is put your offers in. You never know. If you're buying primary residence, I do believe that the interest rates will stabilize and the interest rates will come back down. The feds always come historically, have always come to save the day. If the feds push it too hard, it's going to create a major recession, not just in housing. It's going to cross borders into other sectors of the economy, and it's going to create a major, major, major problem for the country with unemployment, with businesses closing down foreclosures. And what do the feds do? They bring out the printing machine, so they're going to lower interest rates. So, And then the other thing is in 2024, it's an election year, historically interest rates have gone down every election year while they say that the feds is not politicized you make the decision you be the deciding factor on that i'm um, just talking about historically speaking thank you for watching if you appreciate this content make sure you smash that like button below and remember to like and subscribe appreciate you guys watching this video peace out Hey guys, thanks for watching this video to the very end. If you want to continue to watch videos like this one, click this video right here. I think you would enjoy that. And if you want to continue to learn from me and learn how to create wealth through real estate investing, check out my online course. It's in the links below. It's how to get your first off-market deal in under 60 days or less. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate you guys. Peace out.